Welcome in this Pimp or Sim video where, I'm already spoiling, there will be no Sims. Although, the first guy sets up a date by talking about vegan ice cream. How could he ever be a pimp? You'll find out soon enough. The second guy does the same thing by talking about tentacle porn. Buckle up, here we go. Here's girl number one. You can't really see her because we protect her privacy, but she's beautiful and she's holding these flowers and wearing this cute dress. And our guy, let's call him Paul, is talking to her. She says, hi, Paul. Generic female bumble opener. And he goes, sup, in your first pick, did you pick those flowers from the street? I can't even call it flowers because one of those is clearly very long grass. Ah, uh, no, I didn't pick them. And there are some flowers with the grass at the bottom, smiley face. It was at a wedding and someone gave them to me to hold. But you are right, it looks like I'm holding some grass. The person who gave them to you is such a gentleman. If it wasn't for the explanation, I would have looked at your interests and see cooking and vegan and thought you would eat the flowers later. What this guy, Paul, does very good is that his opener is personalized, as we always preach at Text God to do. And also the follow-up text later is personalized. He's really had a thorough look at her profile and he's integrating things from there in the conversation. Nice, original. Can't remember who it was, but I should look out for that kind of person. I confess, I do eat grass stuff sometimes. <laughs> but not that though, not my favorite. And all the feminine emojis are in there. Note to self, hide all the plants in the house when Sarah comes over because she will eat them. Very clever from our guy Paul. He was personalized in her first text. There was already some teasing and he's also already hinting towards meeting up. Something that a lot of guys forget. But the point of dating apps is to go out on a date. I like the fact that you have psychology as an interest. I used to read so many psychology books. Boom, he's personalized, he's teasing, he's already setting up the future date, and now he finds a commonality as well. My boy Paul, killing it. No need, I also have some house plans to train my self-control. That's cute, I like her. Then I have some really good news for you. I'm just about to finish my master's in psychology. What psychology books are your favorites? Good for you. Otherwise, I would have to spray you with my plant sprayer to teach you some manners. <laughs> I think that's pretty funny because I know that that's one tactic people use to train their cats. So he's kind of acting like she's a cat. I'm not sure if it's very effective. I actually tried this with my cat and it did not work. I really hope that you're not going to expose all my childhood traumas. This is the first text of our guy that I don't really like. And I'll tell you why. Ask anyone who's studying psychology or is a psychologist by profession who has this as part of their bio or the dating app profile, people will make the same remarks over and over again. So by Mark doing this, the, the classic, oh no, you're going to read my soul or uh, expose my traumas. What he does is, well, a bunch of things. First of all, he's more of the same, an original. Two, it shows a lack of understanding or a lack of Hey, what would the situation be like for her? Is this maybe something that she's already heard a million times? And three, he's missing an opportunity to really be different from the rest and come through as a fresh breath of air. The guy that she's like, oh my God, this is so refreshing. Please impregnate me immediately. And my favorite books were about mindset because I used to trade stocks and man-woman dynamics because I'm a dating slut. <laughs> a bit of a... A humble brag, I guess. The smart guy with the stocks, at least if he's done it successfully. And then a very, very, very risky part, calling himself a dating slut. Let's see how that pans out. That's super considerate of you that you want to help me with my conduct. You're funny. I like that. I'm not a therapist yet, so probably not. But if you want to talk about something. And what were your most important insights? Also, what characterizes you as a dating slut? You're walking a risky route here, Paul. Let's see what he says. We can definitely do that with some wine and a big box of vegan ice. Second time he's mentioning a date. My most important insight is that you should know your own principles, ideas or reasonings and embrace those. I used to do so much sitting alone in my room with a pen and paper to find my principle. God, I miss those dates. Wow. Isn't Paul just the deepest guy ever? It's actually pretty clever what he's done because he gave a sort of very heavy negative emotional spike to Sarah. It's like, hey, I'm a dating slut. I'm a fuckboy or whatever. But now it turns out that he's just a very deep person who listens to lo-fi in his candlelit room, discovering his true values so that he will be the best 
version of himself at all times, especially during a date with Sarah. Oh, and also he blatantly ignored the question of why he's a dating slut. She goes, I'm done for the wine and I get a lot of negative feedback for this. So I hope this is not a deal breaker as she amps up the curiosity. I don't like ice cream. But chocolate is also a good soul food for that matter. Sure, psychopath. I'm curious to know what those are. I do that a lot too. Now also more again because I have more free time. Aw, that's another cute commonality. They're both journaling in their rooms, looking for their soulmate. Let's continue on WhatsApp so I can tell you about it and bull you for not liking ice cream. And he gives out his number. Very well done. He takes the lead. He actively moves things forward to the date while teasing, while having commonalities, while sharing a bit more deeper stuff. He has a bunch of the text God principles worked in there. And let's agree, this was just a great conversation. I'm sure it turned into a great date with wine and unfortunately not ice cream. But I am pretty certain that these two got married and made beautiful children. Hallelujah. Now, before we look at the second conversation, which, and I warn you, is about fish and tentacles and sexual stuff between women and tentacles and stuff. We just saw Paul pretty much crushing it by really embracing the text God principles. And if you want to experiment or have a little bit of fun with those as well, I'm giving away the 10 texts that always work. You can get them for free. The link is in the video description. Download them and then buckle up because it's time for fish porn. So we're being thrown into the middle of a Bumble conversation here and Sarah goes, you are an octopus. Not a common octopus, mind you, but the majestic, intelligent, veined octopus. Don't get pervy. Also venomous, are insanely resourceful and can be found enjoying many regions of the world. Though regarded as creatures who tend to live in solitude, perhaps you're one stray hair which evolves a new kind. And then a five second voice note, which we do not know what it is. Machinist. Okay, kind of random here. I understand, but stuff is about to get really interesting and it will all make sense. He responds. Thank you for the thorough analysis and quality output, Sarah. It was definitely worth the wait and countless sleepless machinist nights. Chook chook. Even though I'm not really sure how I could ever get pervy on octopuses. God, please tell me you're not into that weird Japanese tentacle porn. Spoiler alert. She is. Or I might have to withdraw my crush. Ha. <laughs> The classic text got, I withdraw my crush line, which you can use whenever she says something you don't like. Hey, I'm pretty sure that's one of the 10 texts that always work. Get them for free. Video description. Ha ha ha. That is what came to mind. Though I haven't seen it and I'm not into it, but I can understand why people are. You're not? Huh? I'm on to you. He sends a 55 second voice note. Who has time for that? And we don't really know what he's saying, but she responds to it. Ha. Oh lord, that took forever to listen to because my phone kept going to sleep which makes the audio stop and I had to keep starting from zero. The only way to keep it from sleeping was to continually change the volume, but even then it would switch off. Grumble, grumble. Let's switch somewhere else. WhatsApp or Telegram? I use Telegram much more often. Work? But I don't mind it either way. Maybe you agree with me. This woman has a strange communication style. I think she's a bit strange in general, but I like her. I've heard a lot about tentacle porn. No idea why. It's just out there? Um, not in my reality, it's not. I don't ever see tentacle porn at all. Do you have anything you want to confess, milady? But I get it. It would be cool, I guess. Guys, I really get the feeling that she's slowly, gently confessing a fetish and she's molding our poor, innocent male into doing the whole tentacle thing with her. Time will tell. Okay, add me on WhatsApp and I'll respond to this odd yet intriguing topic. And boom, here she slides his WhatsApp inbox with a gift that we cannot see moving. But there is a small lady kneeling next to the huge tentacles of an octopus. And she says, say someone is really into it and chooses to leave their lover to fulfill their fetish slash fantasy. What do they do? Take up scuba diving? Fall in love at the aquarium? <laughs> This is probably one of the most random screenshots I've ever seen, but I love it. Beautiful. Let's go on. Oh God. My curiosity pushed me to Google this. Was not disappointed. Still wondering what it does to your ego if your partner leaves you for an imaginary Octo stud. <laughs> and then there's a photo of Octo from Spongebob. And how to explain to your little nephew why you get all emo every time Spongebob Octo comes into view. <laughs> 
Editor, can you zoom into those little tentacle things at the top? Let's study those for a while. Those are very interesting. Okay, that's enough. She goes, oh my God, that black one. Hey, what's wrong with the white one? Haha, -ha. but would it really? I imagine if your partner leaves you for another person, then your confidence takes a hit. But to fulfill their unique fantasy is a different story, right? You can't be butthurt about not being part squid. I mean, that actually makes quite some sense. So we can turn this into a tip for you. If you ever have to leave your partner and you don't want to upset them, just tell them that you're only into squid and other fish. And it's not her, it's you. Anyway, we continue. It's bizarre enough that it would leave you confused maybe and eventually with a funny story. But it's probably better for one's ego to be left for slithery tentacles than the milkman. You look so warm and relaxed in that photo. I'm cold and on the sofa. Oh, I think someone needs some cuddles. Once you go slithery black, you don't go back. <laughs> I like your perspective. It does indeed make for an interesting story to tell on birthday parties and professional networking events. Hey guys, how's work going? Yeah, my wife just left me. She's fucking an octopus. Either way, are you interested in investing in my new company? Well, Sarah, you should have thought of that before you upped and left my warm-blooded buddy for cold Mr. Squiggly. And yet I find it a sign of character that you're at least able to express your regret, albeit in a somewhat cryptic manner. Professional events? Ha ha ha! I would be in tears. Imagine someone confessing this happened and is that serious about it. With the predictable tone of her leaving him for a buddy or whatever. Would love to see people's reactions. I didn't leave you. Yet. And he responds with another almost minute and a half of voice note. We don't know what it says. But what I can tell you is that this guy is actually in my TechScope mentoring program. And once we found some patterns, some mistakes he constantly makes and we fix them. He was absolutely killing it. And now he's setting up dates with... These type of convos, I mean, this is way more refreshing than the stuff I usually get to review. So yeah, good job. If you want to use some of the same things that he's using, again, check out the 10 texts that always work in the video description. And now I know that there's a few guys watching this and they are legitimately into the whole fish tentacle stuff. And they're like, what the hell? This guy doesn't even appreciate that this girl has the fetish and he gets to date her. And it's so rare to find a girl like that. Why don't we find them? Well... If you would take your dating life super seriously and you would sign up to the mentoring program, you would very likely have the same results. All jokes aside, if you're very serious about fixing your dating life, you can plan a free dating strategy call. The link is also in the description. Check out the free download. I hope you enjoyed the review of these rather strange conversations. See you in the next one. I love you forever. And uh, subscribe if you feel like helping me a little bit. Bye.